Hello, everyone, and welcome to Super Switch Heads, the premier Nintendo podcast in all of the internet. My name is Matthew Stoner. My name is Patrick Nisley. My name is David Howe, and boy, oh boy, we have ourselves a very special guest, even though it might not seem like it if you're watching the YouTube version. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our guest this evening is Adam Walters. Uh, CTO of Liquid Bit Games and one of the developers of Killer Queen Black. Uh, one of our favorite games here on Super Switch Heads. We talk about it all the time. And uh, we're so pleased uh, to finally have somebody from uh, Liquid Bit on to talk about uh, Killer Queen Black. Uh, Adam uh, is not going to be here in the first section of the show, but Adam will be joining us for the main topic. Uh, so if that's uh, interesting to you, be sure you stick around for the main topic. We're going to be talking all about Killer Queen Black during that. Uh, and we'll also have him around to talk about some of the games that we've all been playing recently as well. But uh, what, what what else are we talking about here? on the Also show? <laughs> in the news, uh, we we're talking more um, Activation Blizzard stuff that happened this past week. There was a big walkout, um, some big changes, Pokemon Go, changing the Pokestop distance, um, a much surprised uh, Pokemon Snap DLC coming. Um, a weird tweet from Nintendo about Animal Crossing DLC, <laughs> uh, and uh, some uh, some Picross news. Uh, to Let's go! Hey, it's delight. <laughs> Super Picross heads. Before we get started, how's everyone doing? Um, doing all right. Um, did did your uh, so, okay, Patrick's? It looks like I think Patrick's kid just just walked into the room. Uh, Patrick's. Patrick's got Magnus uh, tonight, so that, that that might happen during this. I'll talk <laughs> while Patrick is shooing his child to go watch more Paw Patrol. <laughs> but uh, I've been having an okay week. Um, yeah, it's been it's been decent. Been playing a lot of games. I'm not at my parents' house anymore. Back home, uh, which is nice. I'm kind of getting used to living by myself. Uh, some sometimes I'm just like, oh. Four hours have gone by, and I've just looked at my phone this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll get used to that. It's a process, right? A process. You know, I have yeah. someone being like, "When are we, when are we, where are we going? When are we?" Yeah, yeah. No, nobody's like, "Hey, David, you're wasting your life away by staring <laughs> yeah. at your phone." <laughs> your responsibility. But it's kind of cool too. I mean, I've been playing some like some games that I have been putting off because I've been living with people, and now that I live alone, you know, I can like sink you know a couple hundred hours into a game if I want. I'll get into that. Spoiler. And the games we've been playing this week. What about you, Patrick? How have you been? Oh, uh, if it's not any indication by what just happened, I'm a little bit frazzled today. <laughs> um, my wife's on a work trip, which is great. Uh, my parents were set to watch my kid, but they had some plans changed, so they couldn't. So I was like, all right, that changes what I'm going to do. But, you know, I'm going to embrace that and just have a really great day with my kid. We're going to go swimming. We're going to go bike riding. But it's been storming all day. So those things didn't happen. Mm. And then I was like, okay, we'll just play video games. Then the sun came out and I was like, okay, we'll go swimming. And then it stormed again. And then I was like, okay, we'll go pick up dinner. But it was like scary driving home. I was like, okay, let's just get home. Wow. Been a little bit of a, like every, every time I try to make a plan, it back, it has um, not worked out, but it's wow. been actually a pretty good day nonetheless. So. Hey, there you go. We're having there's fun. A, there's a life lesson in there somewhere, but yeah, I think so. You'll find it someday. We'll find it. <laughs> I'm all good over here. Uh, I'll talk about this later in the episode, but I've been spending a lot of time in the Halo universe thanks to the Halo Infinite technical preview that happened this past weekend. And long story short, loved it. Had a great time. Nice. Uh, awesome. would, would recommend whenever the next flight happens, if you have an Xbox or a PC, it's cross-platform. Uh, let's play. Very good. Yeah, I can't wait. Well, um, We'll get into the news and rumors here in just one second, but just a reminder, we love hearing from our listeners, so please send us a question. We're going to do a listener question episode. Uh, please share our podcast. Let us know what you think about anything we say. We always love to hear from y'all. Um, and with that, y'all ready to oh, talk news? Or before, you got Matthew? Before, before I got one thing. Um, if you are following the Discord meta, um, if you're listening to the podcast version, you're not on our Discord, join up our Discord because now we got Buffalo Luigi emojis that people have been <laughs> That's asking, right. Uh, Finally happened. Important. Asking about for like 
four or five months. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And then also I just, we didn't have too many like shout outs from the the previous episode, which we did on, uh, on toxicity and gaming culture. Uh, not too many people really engage with us, which makes me feel like we nailed that conversation. 100%. We're on the right side of history for, uh, for navigating such a difficult topic. Right. Come on. But if you disagree, let us know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Cool. Well, then we'll talk about this week's news and rumors, which kind of starts with what David just talked about, the Activision Blizzard stuff. Um, Just a quick summary. There's been a lawsuit in California where there's been a huge history of sexual harassment and sort of um, toxic workplace, uh, especially for women and um, other marginalized groups of people. So it sounds like the uh, employees of Activision Blizzard staged a walkout, right? Is I, I actually haven't followed this exact. I saw like pictures of it on social media and stuff. Right. And I don't know exactly, you know, if there's been information about um, about this, but I kind of heard that there wasn't much formal recognition of it from the company. Is that correct? Did y'all, is that y'all's understanding? Yeah, it was kind of something that was, you know, uh, it was something that you would see tweeted about with a lot of other developers in solidarity, but then not a lot of like actual recognition from it, from Activision Blizzard themselves. But there was like, you know, petition signed like an internal document signed by like thousands of employees of uh, this company that, that were all kind of like, we're not going to, this is not okay. We're, we're, we stand with, you know, those who have been accusing people of stuff and, Excuse me, and, and that side of the lawsuit. So it was really good to see a little bit of solidarity, um, you know, because we t- that's a lot of like what we talked about last week is like, you know, it's as hard as this is for just the gaming community as a whole, you know, the the people who are like good people that work at Activism Blizzard that are having to like deal with all of this within um, have to have it so much worse. So it was good to 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 see a little bit of solidarity there and and so much support for the walkout on Wednesday. And they got a little bit of support, um, for better or for worse, from Activision Blizzard because they were offered paid time off to participate in the walkout too. Yeah, I guess it's better than not. But yeah, it's like the, you're already <laughs> villains. No. You can't be more of a <laughs> yeah. villain. Like you can. They uh, totally yeah. could, but <laughs> yeah, and they still are. But uh, uh-huh. definitely that. I mean, I feel like that boycott is still ongoing, right? And it's like, and I think a lot of people from across, you know you know the twitter sphere and and the gaming community in general i'm I'm noticing a lot of people being like okay i'm just gonna delete all my blizzard games i'm not gonna participate in this shit online and i think that it's it's been dominating the news cycle and so i think ultimately that's a good thing um you know because a lot of the times the stuff gets swept under the rug like we saw last year with ubisoft and all that stuff so i think that i think people have kind of finally had enough uh, have had enough so it's it's good to see that, that that's actually starting to do something Getting onto some Nintendo specific things, and in particular, some Nintendo mobile things. Um, Dr. Mario World is going to be shut down uh, on October 31st, 2021. That's the Dr. Mario mobile game. Um, I think that means it had about, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, about a two year run. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Roughly, maybe a little more, a little less. It was the lowest performing Nintendo mobile game that they've had despite them pulling out some really great uh, underutilized characters. <laughs> I would like say some do- of the best. Like Dr. Goomba Tower? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it still made like millions of dollars. You know, it made like, I think it was like, I saw the metrics was something like 15 million, something like that. And still, that was- But there, not like, enough million. millions. We need more millions. It, yeah. uh, uh, it came out July 10th, 2019. Okay. So just yeah. over yeah. two years. It would be right now is about two years. October yeah. it'll be two in a few months two and some change yeah do you think that this is going to cause nintendo to kind of rethink some of their mobile strategy going forward because i mean this is you know this isn't the first time that they've shut down a, a mobile game after not that long you know Mitobo comes to mind and and uh and stuff like that so it's you know can you see do you see nintendo like jumping back in with another big franchise into the mobile sphere this is pure speculation, but I think it's based on some comments we've heard from like maybe Furukawa, which is that they they are not they don't really consider themselves 
mobile developers. Is, I'm, I'm right. making this up. I remember them saying something to the effect of like, we've done that and tried that. And the, we, while we will probably continue to do some of it, it's not our main focus, right? Like right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting words into their mouth, but I feel like it was something like that we heard from Nintendo. And that makes sense to me. I think they're always going to be making a mobile game here or there, but I don't think it's going to, I don't know. I think it's going to maybe be these sort of things where they partner with other people like this Pikmin one we've heard about and right. maybe fewer and far between. That's kind of my speculation. Yeah, it's like looking at, I'm looking at a chart with a bunch of the other mobile games that Nintendo has out or has released. It's like Dr. Mario, as we said, is the worst performing one and the best performing one is Fire Emblem Heroes. So there's lots of people willing to spend money on the Fire Emblem franchise. So I think I don't think Nintendo is going to get out of the mobile game, but they might rethink of what types of game and who is spending money on their games on in the mobile platform. So, so waifus is what you're yeah. saying yeah. is what they need. To hey, be. hey, man, read I mean, because it's lines, that and like Dragalia. <laughs> Ro- Dragalia Lost is another big one for them too, right? That's yep. got a number of waifus. So, yep, Nintendo, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, whatever that looks like for other games, I would love to see other Nintendo franchises represented here on mobile. Yeah, um, but maybe that is waifus, and it's good for them. Another uh, <laughs> mobile game that's in the news is Pokemon Go. Uh, obviously, not exactly Nintendo, but uh, you know the Pokemon company, partly owned by Nintendo, what have you. Um, Pokemon Go made some changes to its formula for the pandemic, I think, right? Um, at least mm-hmm. in certain regions to, you know, obviously people aren't being as encouraged to go swarm public places like what happened when the game released. So they made it easier to do some stuff from distance. But unfortunately, they are rolling that back now, um, which is kind of a bad timing because even though, you know, we've talked about this sort of outside the podcast, this has been a weird sort of whiplash experience over the last month and a half or whatever mm-hmm. it is where things started to kind of revert back to a lot of in-person things, but now we're kind of closing down again and it's a weird space we're in. So I, I don't know that I know enough about this to like assign a lot of blame because this kind of decision may have been made a while ago and been rolled out now. And then hopefully they'll listen (laughs) to, to the feedback that they're getting, which right. Um, Yeah. People are pissed. Fans are definitely pissed. You know, I, I mean, well, first of all, it was just like a quality of life change for people that just want to complete their Pokedexes, you know, it was like, yeah, or disabled. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to maybe make Mm -hmm. some of those things permanent. Yeah. And you you know, and you understand it's like the whole point of this game was to like encourage exercise and to get people to like go out into their communities and all that kind of stuff. And to that extent, this game has been very successful, but it's like, I think it's, we're just like you were saying, Patrick, there's like a bunch of whiplash going on right now. Like, um, I don't know if you guys follow like Hollywood uh, news or entertainment news at large, but you know, like Clifford the Big Red Dog movie that was supposed to come out in September is now officially the first movie that's being pushed back due to the Delta variant. Um, wow. And so there's, that. yeah. And so, you know, Hollywood now for the past like few months has been like, we're back, baby. You know what I mean? And like fucking, you know, they've experimented with, you know, as far as Disney's concerned with like the premium access model, the HBO Max model for releasing day and date in theaters. And, you know, and they were like kind of done with that because, you know, that that has proven to be very difficult for for movie releases. Right. And so now it's, you know, all these like Marvel movies that are supposed to be theater only releases. People aren't sure if those are going to get pushed back. So I think it's just in general in the world, we're going to be seeing a lot of uncertainty, I think, in the coming times. And and I hope that a company like Niantic is able to pivot quickly enough to to bring back some of the. uh that stuff uh, to make it easier to play from home or, or, or at a distance from other people. In additional Pokemon news, and this was somewhat surprising. I don't know how y'all felt about this, but it was announced that new Pokemon snap, which came out in may, I believe it was, is getting some free content Um, that should be out by the time this podcast comes out. Um, Hasn't come out uh, before we've recorded this. But um, they're adding new Pokemon and new areas. Um, so that's pretty cool, actually. I I was not expecting this game to get any sort of free DLC. Um, I could have seen even paid, but that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Um, it's a good amount, too. It's like three new areas, right? And then mm-hmm. a bunch of new Pokemon. Like that's a and then each of those have like a day and night 
region for each as well. So that's that's a that's more free DLC than I was expecting for sure. I was expecting something, um, but that's that's pretty great to see that they're supporting it that much. Yeah, I I did not like hundred percent this game, um, and I don't know that I ever will. But like, definitely going to come back to it now with new areas and check those out. So. Mm-hmm. Um, another <laughs> update information, Nintendo, uh, tweeted about the most recent animal crossing quote unquote update, which is just another, you know, sort of rehash of last summer's fireworks and that sort of thing, um, coming out, but they had sort of a, a statement about more updates in the future, which is vague enough to, if you're a cynic to say that that's not. Um, that doesn't mean anything, but I, th- I believe that that means that they are going to add at least some amount of something to this game. And I think we could probably guess that, you know, probably talking about the pandemic, that that might be part of the reason that we haven't seen oh, yeah. um, this sooner. Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking for more a uh, large scale update to this game. It just makes sense for them to do it, whether it's free or paid um, because of how popular this game is and was. Um, and there's also been some recent data mining of this most recent update that suggests uh, the possibility. I mean, it's, there's been some stuff that's always been in the code as I understand it. I I'm not, an, you know, I'm not hundred percent clear on all this stuff, but there's some data miners that a long time ago found some, some suggestions of, some updates to the museum of Brewster's cafe and some of the more recent updates kind of altered some of that code or something like that. So it seems Mm -hmm. quite possible that there is some, some chunkier updates that are coming at some point. Yeah, I I definitely would expect it. And I think that like, like you said, Patrick, I mean, you know, they, I feel like a lot of the updates that have been coming out over the past year during this pandemic were already planned well ahead of time. And now we're getting into the point where it's like we're waiting for the stuff that's been developing during this time. Right. And, you know, it, we know that, you know, Nintendo and a lot of Japanese companies have not been, you know, handling the working from home situation, you know, as smoothly as a lot of Western companies have been able to do. And so I, I imagine that that is a big reason why some of this has been pushed back. But man, Brewster would be hype. I'm definitely not going to play it again, but I would be happy for people that are regular animal <laughs> classic players to finally be able to get some coffee with their bird boy. I won't talk about this later because I'll talk about it now, but I have actually been playing some animal crossing recently because this uh, fireworks update, my niece, uh, well, my brother texted me. He's like, Hey, your niece wants to play animal crossing with your son. And so we uh, we did a fireworks show. <laughs> together. Very nice. wow. Yeah. And it got got us back into it for a little bit. So that was very cool. good. Um, other DLC news, Crosscode, which is a popular indie game in our community, is getting some DLC uh, should be coming out shortly after this podcast. Right. Or the console release. I, I, is this DLC maybe come out on Steam? I'm not entirely sure. I've, uh, I've not played y- this game. Full disclosure, yes. I don't know much about this. The David. DLC is out on, on, on PC already, and it's coming to consoles on August 5th, which is my fucking birthday. What's up? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, CrossCode is a it, fantastic RPG, um, indie RPG that is just filled to the brim with like incredible story and lore and characters and gameplay. And um, yeah, and this, I know that we've got a few members of our community that are, have been very excited for this as well. I still have not completed the main game, so I'm not going to pick this up right away. But um, whenever I do, I know I'll want to jump more into it. The, uh, the you know, it, it adds a lot to the 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 actual story of the game, and so I'm very excited to to play this um, when I eventually get to it. In uh, additional David's birthday news, Picross S Genesis and Master System was announced this past week and is coming out on August fifth as well uh right that's right that's also your birthday yes <laughs> hey, august 5th is also your birthday <laughs> august 5th is still my birthday uh still. from the previous <laughs> news uh segment <laughs> it, uh it remains my birthday to this day uh but uh no obviously i'm so excited about this i mean you know I, there's really no reason for me to buy this because i still have like so many picross games on my switch that i could still keep playing forever you know what i mean like i haven't completed picross X S six yet But it's like, this one's been in development for a long time. Like they announced that they were going to be doing this game like 
two or three years ago and they only finally gave it a release date uh and it's just cool to see because it's like you know nintendo has put out picross games that are like game themed um with pixel art from like nintendo games in the past you know uh, the original picross game on nintendo platforms was mario's picross right and so it's like you know, it's just funny that it's like we're finally getting one, but it's like Sega themes, right? <laughs> but it's cool, you know, and it's great. And there's a demo out right now um, that you can try out, and, and it's already really cool to like kind of make pixel art characters and stuff like that. It's just nice to like have a Picross game where the solution isn't always just like bowl of fruit or <laughs> or space shuttle or something like that, right? It's just like stuff it's, that we all can relate to a little bit more as gamers. It's gonna Sonic. be like. Uh, Axe guy from Golden Axe. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely a lot of fringe Genesis games. Like, this is definitely made for Sega fans. But, man, I bought a fucking Picross game that was based on, like, Overlord, I think it, that anime is called. It's like Lord of the Nazarek. Like, I never fucking watched that anime, so I'm definitely <laughs> scooping this one up. <laughs> this is some David-centric news segments. Here we go with Super Monkey Ball news next. Um, Hell yeah. Uh, it was confirmed that the Super Monkey Ball game that's coming out, what's it called? Banana Mania, right? Um, You're goddamn right. It's Banana Mania. <laughs> it's coming in September. Is that correct, David? <laughs> October. October. Okay. Unfortunately, not September. I thought it was September. Um, coming out um, in October, it sounds like then. Um, they just confirmed that it's going to be 60 frames per second, right? That's is, right. Is that the big news here? The big, I mean, the big news, um, you know, and this had come out beforehand as well, but they, they on their Twitter, the... If you're not, if you're a Super Monkey Ball fan, you're not following the uh, Super Monkey Ball Twitter. I highly recommend you do. They're like drip feeding stuff, uh, just like information and just tons of clips of this uh, game, uh, which is really great to see. And they recently showed a video that confirmed, yes, the game on Switch is running at 60 frames per second, which is absolutely crucial for this kind of game. Uh, and so seeing that is fantastic. And then uh, a another thing that has been confirmed is that uh, motion controls will be built into this game, uh, which is interesting in a couple fronts. Uh, first of all, it's interesting because Banana Blitz HD, uh, the remake of the Wii game, uh, did not have motion controls on any of the platforms, which is funny because that game was built around the Wii's motion controls, right? And so for the HD remake, they did not include it even on the switch version, which left a lot of people confused. I don't think that motion controls are the best way to play monkey ball, but it was just interesting that that was missing there, but they've decided to add motion controls in for the switch version in banana mania, which never had motion controls when it re released originally as super monkey ball one and two. So it's kind of a strange thing, but again, it's one of those things where it's like, I'd rather have the option and never use it than to not have the option at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so it just seems like, they're really throwing like everything, including the kitchen sink at this game. And it seems like they're really putting a lot of love into it. And this is kind of like the game that monkey ball fans have been asking for, for a long time. Nice. And then lastly, just wanted to throw this out there. Um, the legend of Zelda skyward sword has a art panel that you can get with your platinum points. Um, I know a lot of criticism has been leveled at the my Nintendo rewards program, but lately they have added a lot of more interesting rewards, including physical things like this in all regions and so that's cool to see that kind of stuff actually happen and you can do something maybe that you want yeah. <laughs> with your platinum it's points and get like an acrylic up. acrylic art piece yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna grab this one i think i've got a shit ton of platinum points right now yes yeah, if you ever pop around on the website they're easy to get so um, yeah yeah i will say something that's caused a little bit of controversy because there's never any nintendo news without controversy uh nintendo has raised the price of their shipping from five dollars to seven dollars. Oh, that is controversial. Yeah. So they, yeah, that that is where they get you. Yeah. On these, on these free. So things. You, you really have to ask yourself: Is an acrylic print of Skyward Sword worth seven dollars? Which is what I'm asking myself right now. I'm basically just airing <laughs> this on the podcast so I can figure this out for myself. <laughs> I say yes. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, it all right. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's all do it right now. Let's all do it. Let's make a pact right now that we're all going to get this acrylic art print. I need everyone to uh, let's make a blood pact. I need all of us to uh, slice our hands and put up your hands to the speaker of your uh, smartphone or car where you're listening to this podcast. David's doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> David literally has <laughs> <a mind>. <laughs> 
<laughs> now I've been I've been fingering this uh, pocket knife the entire time we've been recording, and so it's uh, amazing that I have not already drawn blood in this <laughs> yeah. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, um, that does it then for the news and rumors for the week. And uh, we're going to take a real quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have Adam Walters and talk all about Killer Queen Black. And we are back with our guest, Adam Walters from Liquid Bit. Thank you, Adam, for joining us today. Um, so we're going to be talking all about Killer Queen Black and and likely a lot about Killer Queen Arcade as, as well. But before we get into the details of that, Adam, can you just introduce yourself? Maybe tell us what it is you do at Liquid Bid, a bit about your background, how you got involved, that kind of thing? Uh, sure. Uh, so yeah, I'm Adam Walters. Um, uh, I guess my title is CTO of Liquid Bit. Um, so I kind of, at least, you know, in Killer Queen, it was just kind of all over the place, or Killer Queen Black. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, I did do some gameplay stuff. Uh, Mike Chorak, our chief architect, did most of the nitty gritty as far as like writing our own um, physics simulation um, and the net code stuff. Um, I kind of, you know, learned that through him, uh, you know, cool. and so just so I could help out with that stuff. Um, and, but otherwise, you know, everything from like matchmaker to leaderboards to authentication across the various uh, consoles and platforms that we're on. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of, yeah, you know, we're a small team, so we wear a lot of hats between us. Um, so nice. kind of all over the place, you know, touch a little bit of everything. Well, also, one thing before we get too far, too, um, we actually talk a lot about <laughs> Killer Queen Black on our show. <laughs> so um, most of our listeners are probably familiar if they were longtime listeners or people who came to watch this episode, they probably know about it. But for anybody that's out there listening that doesn't know much about Killer Queen or Killer Queen Black. Could you give us your elevator pitch for the game or the games? <laughs> yeah, I'll try. I mean, it's, I mean, the quickest way I guess I would say it is um, it's a team based, uh, you know, strategy multiplayer game uh, with a heavy online focus. There is online, um, but, you know, we really, you know, are, we're focused on multiplayer from the get go. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's, there's three different ways to win. Um, so it's really about working as a team, not only focusing on your objectives, trying to keep an eye on what the other team is kind of going for and thinking about that and, you know, trying to balance those two things. Cool. For sure. Yeah. And to, just to piggyback on that, I've, I've found like the, the thing that I love most about the game and, and I've played quite a bit of, of both Killer Queen Arcade and, and Killer Queen Black, but the thing I love about it is like how deceptively simple it is right or maybe like <laughs> practically simple it is too right because it's like i find that it's a game that it's really really easy to introduce people to but then also one of those that you really stick around for those strategy bits like later on once you kind of yeah, like figure out the way to actually communicate with people it becomes like really fun right yeah and i would say i would say it's deceptively complex like, yeah. like you know you look That's at probably it you're what like, I oh this yeah. doesn't like seem that complicated but like yeah Especially with arcade, like I knew a lot of the people in the Chicago uh, Killer Queen arcade community mm -hmm. and like watching them play at the level they play where, you know, I'm a toddler compared to what they can accomplish, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, both in strategy and in like the physical nature of just like the tap rates and just stuff like that. Um, yeah. But like, I, I, you know, it was just fun the first time I played it and then I kind of saw the level they can get to. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think like when I've tried to explain it to somebody who, who I'm about to introduce it to, like the other week, uh, I had a friend that he came over and and then David and I, we all played online together. But and I was like, you know, you try to explain it before you fire it up and you're like, you know what? We just need to play it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Yeah. Because no, yeah, you're, like, I mean, you're like, one of the ways you win is snail. And they're like, what the fuck does that mean? Uh -huh. Yeah, no, it, it was always so hard. Um, you know, when we, we did like PAX East, PAX West, like um, E3, you know, like at those events, you're trying to get people in and out to play. And it's like, you're just overloading them with information. Yeah. Like, I'll just sit behind you guys and try to coach you while you're doing it just to see how it's going. But because um, yeah. it's a lot to keep in your head. And like the best way is just to get in there and play it. Totally. Yeah. When I introduce well, people, uh, it's usually like, oh, it's like Joust. And they're like, 
what, what's, what's joust? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I am approaching my forties quickly. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for making me feel old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, so Killer Queen Black is sort of the console version of the arcade game Killer Queen, right? And I don't know what, I'd like to hear a little bit if you know about the history of making the arcade game and and like how Liquid Bit is involved with Bumble Bear. Maybe those are kind of separate questions, but like. Yeah, um, they're they're kind of separate. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be the best one to give the full history of them building that. Um, it started, Nick and Josh made a fuel game um, for a, uh, they're the, the, the they're Bumble Bear, like right. the two like founders of that. Um, so they had made a field game. So like running around with like foam, um, uh, those like noodles that keep you afloat. Uh-huh. Those, like, gotcha. You know, those cool noodles? like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Little and little berries. Um, but it was like, you know, actually running around in a field, um, roughly the same, uh, mechanics, you know, or like baseline. Um, and then they realized there was something there and they ended up making an arcade game out of it. Um, That's hilarious. And as far as killer queen black, we went because uh, me, Matt, and Mike, the other uh, you know, two uh, members of Liquid Bit or the, the founders, um, at least from like the technical side, um, Justice uh, it was the other one that was like he, you know, uh, lead backing like financial provider and helping us with that, um, and you know, kind of just like being involved generally. Uh, but we. Uh, me, Matt, and Mike worked together, and we went to uh, Logan Arcade, which is in Chicago, uh, when I still lived there, and we went and played it and just fell in love. Mm-hmm. And so we all kind of, you know, all around the same time, um, we're moving on from our job together um, and decided, you know, let's let's see if we can make the, like a version of this. And like kind of, we ended up reaching out, you know, we, we wanted to reach out to um, Bumble Bear because they have done such a great job of building a community within the arcade. Like people mm-hmm. just travel across the country um, and they're friends across the country all through this game, which is just truly an amazing thing. Um, yeah. and, and like, it, 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 that's what's made it great to like become a part of that is just like getting to like, just meet these great people. Um, but we wanted to make an online version. Like, we didn't know it was going to be what Killer Queen Black is today. Like, different weapons and four-on-four four versus five-on-five. Five. Right. But we figured, you know, before we reached out to them, we wanted to prove out the networking side. Because it's kind mm-hmm. of, like, one of the big biggest problems, um, our hardest problems to solve. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to come to them, like, you know, doing our due diligence and, like, prove out that we could do this. Um, so we were in Chicago. They were in New York. We kind of played a very close replica just four on four instead of five of five of the original killer queen arcade. Um, and then we went to New York, uh, and we kind of just did like essentially a game jam with them. Like we just kind of, you know, we're in a meeting room and just work through things. And that's where we came up with the idea of having trigger based attacks and the idea to keep exploring new weapons. Um, Mm. because, especially when you get to like more than one-on-one, like you, you start to lose the ability to do really close contact and have it feel good uh, online, like network play. Um, sure. So doing things like weapons that have like a slight radius and it's trigger based um, things like that help a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, first person shooters can get around it because they can always show a kill cam you know, so you're like, oh, yeah. that's why I died. Even though it didn't feel like it from my perspective, they can show you where the bullet came from. Um, you kind of lose that when everyone's looking at the full screen. Right. right. Or like their own little tiny section of it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't just be like, well, this is what the other person saw because there is latency <laughs> correction and stuff like that that goes on. Right. So. Yeah. Well, that kind of answers one of the questions, which was, you know, what, why did you make the choices you made about adapting the game? to console, right? Like it sounds like a lot of it was for weapon for, for latency and that kind of thing. There is um, definitely that. Um, we didn't want it to be a direct clone. Um, mm-hmm. Four on four versus five on five was pretty heavily driven by, well, one just, I mean, bandwidth, but that wasn't the biggest reason. There's like eight controller limits 
on a yeah. lot of consoles. Mm-hmm. On the so, Switch. So like, yeah, you yeah, kind of yeah. had to do that. Um, <laughs> the maps are actually a little bit smaller and characters a bit bigger because okay. with the arcade, you're standing in front of like a 48 inch screen or something right in your face. Right. Um, but if you're sitting back and watching it, you know, or playing it from your couch, but like having that same scale, it's going to be harder to keep track of your players. And I mean, I still lose who I am. <laughs> I help yeah. build the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. I, I love the, I, I love that there are differences like that between the two games because it's mm-hmm. like, because it, because if it had just been a one-to-one like remake of it, of the arcade version, you know, uh, without even just those things you just pointed out, it's like, you, it would be missing that fundamental like magic of like being crammed next to four other people on one side of the, you know what I mean? And yeah, like kind yeah, of the, yeah. the noise of the arcade and kind of that whole thing. And so I think like making it a tighter focus game and then adding in all that extra stuff, adding in like the attack for the queen. So it's not just a dive bomb every time. Oh like, yeah. They can dash. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like stuff like that, like makes it its own. And then, um, and then obviously, you know, you've just got like updates and stuff like that, that you can put out uh, that, that make it a lot, make it its own experience too. And um, I imagine that's got to be kind of like fulfilling for you guys as well. So you feel like you yeah, have it, more ownership than it just being like a straight port or something like that. Yeah. It, it, I thought it was great because it was almost like working on a new game because like yeah. we were working with Josh and Nick and me, Matt and Mike are not game designers. Um, so it was, you know, a really, really an eye opening experience getting to work with experienced game designers and like the way they approach things versus me, Matt and Mike who have, you know, liquid bed has a very technical like uh, foundation on like where, you know, our, in our backgrounds. So, um, it, it was a, it was a lot of fun working with them through that. Mm. Uh, I I want to I, I want to praise you just a little bit more just on the whole mm. netcode thing of this game because it's like, you know, we're a Nintendo podcast. We do a lot of stuff about like Nintendo games and, and the way that they handle online, and it's like something that really frustrated me about the new Super Smash Brothers was just the inability to play online with friends when you have more than one person on your system. You know what I mean? And then whenever I got your game, I was just like inherently worried that I would have those issues. Right. And then (laughs) to my like delight and surprise, it was like partnering up or squatting up with people, like with multiple people on one console into a big party and then doing all that cross platform as well was just so seamless. And, um, so just like, thanks for doing that and not skipping <laughs> on it, I guess. It. Like, I don't know if I have a question there. It's just like, I'm just like, so like traumatized by like fucking Nintendo, like online games <laughs> that this being so easy, I was like, oh my God, this is just so nice. It's such a breath of fresh air. Um, I imagine that it had to be like a little difficult to, to implement some of that netcode stuff. I mean, especially between all the different platforms, like, yeah, do you know I mean, any like challenges there that you would want to share? Yeah. I mean, the... The in-game play, like, netcode stuff, I mean, that was a lot done by uh, Mike, who's just uh, a whiz, like, when it comes to things like that. Um, mm-hmm. And there it's about, a lot about, like, you know, keeping your packet size low, um, handling um, drop packets and things, and, you know, trying to smooth it out the best you can. Mm-hmm. Like, um, the rest of it, though, like, the, the party system and things like that, that was done uh, kind of leveraging another service. Um, so we kind of like always built that out using this other service to like, you know, handle communication more so. Um, and, mm. and, you know, then joining people up or putting whatever rules they have as far as who can join and so on and so forth. The big challenge there um, is was when we went to Xbox because Xbox has an amazing system already built into the OS for right. like join part, join someone's game and, um, you know, invite someone through the shell of the Xbox interface, which really does align with what we had built. But to marry those two was just, <laughs> was a little bit rough. Um, yeah. And that was, we were finishing up the port right around when COVID hit. And so what made it really challenging is we didn't have an office anymore. Right. So like I had three Xbox dev kits and just running around, you know, between different rooms, trying to accept invites (laughs) and send and test all these scenarios. 
So like I, you know, I, I ended up being the one that, you know, just we had to have all of them somewhere versus tying down two people trying to communicate like, Hey, can you jump on and send an invite now? And then right. if it went wrong, try to debug it. But um, you know, like that, that was a challenge just because they were so closely aligned, but slightly different. Um, and just, yeah, the, uh, you know, trying to have one person man three consoles was a bit rough. <laughs> Well, you, you bring up Xbox and and um, maybe we can talk a little bit about uh, the decisions around consoles and, and some of these questions you may not be able to answer and that's fine, but just we got to try. Um, <laughs> so the, y'all went with uh, obviously Steam and, and the Switch first uh, when the game first came out. And I think sometimes fans don't always appreciate the reasons for these sorts of things. Sometimes they're technical, sometimes they're financial. Is there any insight you can give into why you chose those platforms for launch um, of the game and other ones for later rollout? Yeah, we did. Uh, it was, so it was Steam, uh, Nintendo, and then Discord also. Oh, okay. They, oh, they right. had like a store for a little while, um, which had some cool integrations with um, like the Discord chat client. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of the same thing. You could hit invite and just drop a link into a chat room. People could click it and then just join your party um, wow. or, you know, you could just show up next to your name. Um, but uh, I mean, Steam, Steam and Discord were both PC. So that was kind of the obvious. Right. I mean, initially, that's all we thought we were going to do. Um, but then Nick and Josh from Bumble Bear had talked to people at uh, they talked previously to people at Nintendo. So we reached out and then they extended the gracious invite to come to the show floor on e3 of was that 2018 i think think 2018 yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and not just that but treehouse live um and that was probably the would have been at least personally my first choice in a console to move to Mm -hmm. (coughs) excuse me it was relatively new um and popular uh, and I love playing mine. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had, I had an Xbox much longer, but, um, yeah, it just seemed like you always want to try and get in on the, you know, ride the, the tail or, you know, ride it up as it's coming up and becoming popular and that spread. So that was part of the reason too. Um, so it, I mean, their connection and everything they did for us, they made developing on it really easy. Um, it was a great fit. So. Yeah, I mean that was one of the first times I I heard about what y'all were doing out you know outside of already knowing about Killer Queen Arcade, but just like you know I think it was you know the the indie world or maybe it was even that E three where they like showed it off for the first time in one of their own announcements and it was like okay well I need that right away <laughs> you know and then it was just like looking when the game was going to come out at random times you know and then and then when it finally came out it was great um, yeah. and then yeah it was also like. Something with the with the Switch version, like at, at the very beginning, uh, it was I think it was like f- it was tied to four players locally, uh, like at mm-hmm. the very beginning of the release. And so, you know, for me, it wasn't that big of a deal because it's like if you have two switches, it's a constant w- single screen activity, so it's not a huge deal. But then there was like a update really fast with the eight player. Uh, I think that was Hydra. We, we named our like ones, but I, I think the right. multi-headed the one was update. the uh, the the eight person finally on. Yeah, 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 and that that was like a game changer as well, and that made it to where it was like, you know, like we we did. But I think the, the one of the very last things we did before the pandemic was like we had this get together at a bar where we like played on the big screen with you know <laughs> nice. just yeah. eight eight controllers hooked up to one <laughs> system, and that was definitely like. A really good experience. So I was glad you guys were able to get that update out and keep those like coming at a pretty consistent clip. The local wireless, I mean, for what it is, it works pretty well. Um, but you know, anytime you're adding kind of, you know, a network component to something like that, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's, it can get a little bit dicey. Um, you know, uh, sure. you know, like you have to have like worry about the proximity between them, other interference that may be around versus just being able to like plug in and play. Um, so yeah, it, that was, that was a fun one to get out. Cool. Well, um, and then eventually the game went multi-platform or, I mean, it already was, but like to, to other platforms and got a couple of questions there and we can take them in whatever order, but I'm curious about, um, 
using Game Pass and and if there's any, I, this is another thing you may not be able to to share a lot of details about for various reasons we understand. But if there's any insight you can give us into, you know, what what are some of the pros or cons of of, of agreeing to put your game on Game Pass and if there's anything you can tell us about that. Um, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, the pros were like, I mean, Xbox was great and I, I love their platform. Um, they, uh, we had a big like surge of players right after mm-hmm. that, right? Totally. Just because it just, you know, they have a ton of subscribers. I mean, I'm a Game Pass subscriber. Um, so the, it just immediately, right, is available to people for free. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's one of the things, you know, we struggled with throughout the the years or year and a half or whatever it's been out is uh almost two years i guess um it is player based because online games and like especially with ranked you can't really throw ai in there right right so that means like you need at least eight people and then you have to balance between waiting time and skill of each player like it, it, it's it's a challenge like eight eight people required to start a game always makes things hard. So it was nice to like bring that out and put it in front of more people and just get more Mm -hmm. people in that pool to play. Yeah. I I find that like so frustrating because, you know, I love, you know, I play a ton of indie games and it's like, and and I love indie games that have a good online component. Like one of my favorite games uh, to play online is Tricky Towers. I don't know if you ever played that game. Uh, it's like that, no. it's like inverse Tetris, basically. It's like it's Tetris, but instead of trying to clear blocks, you try to make the tallest tower you can. Uh, and it has like real physics and stuff. Anyway, this isn't a Tricky Towers podcast, <laughs> but it's like the problem with that game is that it's so much fun, but like every. Um, like every server for that game is like platform specific. And so it's like if all of them were combined, I would never have any problems like finding people to play with. But whenever I go and try to play on switch, you know, it's like, there's nobody playing or they're, they're only on at certain times. Right. If I have it on PS4 as well. And so it's like, there'll be people playing then, but not when people on switch were playing. So I think that's something that is like super crucial for, for an indie game. Um, you know, that's yeah. not going to have like the big marketing push of like a big triple a game is like, if you're going to have an online component, like having it cross platform seems like it's a must. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was uh, like that's where like the liquid came in our name was like the idea of being like fluid and being able to like that was always like one of our top priorities is making sure everyone can play with everyone else. Um, right. So that's why we did a lot of, you know, custom built net code versus like just using, you know, an option that a platform provides. Right. Because then it's going to be much harder. Um so we we did always keep that in mind up front because we knew it was important not to segment our player base. Um because otherwise you know no one would probably be finding games right now. But yeah. Uh you know, so that that was always like uh one of the like top like I guess uh objectives uh, you know from our mind was just trying to make sure everyone can play. Um some platforms you have to at least give the option to be like, I only want to play with uh, like Microsoft people, like mm-hmm. you know, like they, there's settings in Xbox to dis- disable cross platform play, you know. Right. So, so we did have to like incorporate that into the matchmaker, which wasn't a big deal, but um, yeah, know, like hopefully people don't default. turn that off. No, yeah, no, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we, we have cross play on by default, it, right? Right, right. It always seems like more of the um, like a parental setting is the way <laughs> I always looked at it, but right? <laughs> If for some reason, so you know, a parent wants to turn that off, like we'll respect it, but yeah, hopefully they don't. It sounds like that was one of y'all's top priorities. Was it also one of the biggest challenges of enabling cross platform play for y'all? Uh, uh, in what way? Just, just like just do just cross- technically, yeah. Like, does it because you said you had to build you know a lot more custom net code? Do you think that? Yeah, a lot um, of work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's definitely not an easy topic or like <laughs> subject or like, you know, thing to undertake. Sure. Um, that said, I, I think doing that um, and doing it kind of rolling your own allows you to get a lot more, uh, like contr- gives you a lot more control, mm. especially when it comes to, um, you know, how you handle like compression and just like, you know, just it, instead of just like, oh, we have to use with, you know, whatever they provide to us and um, lock us in there. So it's not the easiest, but it 
does help when you have a deeper understanding of the internals with it. I was just curious, uh, you mentioned like the the community behind Killer Queen uh, a couple of different times, and it's like such an important aspect of both games, Killer Queen Black and uh, Killer Queen Arcade. But curious, like what was the acceptance like from the person who plays Killer Queen Arcade? Um, did the community kind of like switch from the arcade to the console version during COVID? Or do you see like a lot of uh, players that play arcade play black like uh, regularly? Curious about uh, the community. Yeah, aspect a little bit of both. Um, I think in general, like the ex- the acceptance is great. I mean, it, you know, it's not for everyone um, in general. Um, so there were some people that tried it, but they didn't like hate on it. They were just like, yeah, it's just not for me compared to the arcade. And that's all right. Okay. Um, Purists. But, but there's a <laughs> lot of players like, uh, you know, from the arcade, especially the ones I know in Chicago and even in other, uh, you know, cities like New York and whatnot, um, you know, they they all played and played in the, uh, like we were in the Indie Gaming League and another league has spawned up and are active in our Discord. Um, and it's great, like, you know, and, and like people that have dedicated themselves to just like, you know, essentially trying to get the same, uh, you know, achievements they got in Arcade and like how well they've, become established there and doing it you know it's not it's not a replacement i don't think anyone's ever looked at it that way um, right like we got invited out to um uh, so i live in portland now but not the last bumble bash so bumble bash is the national tournament for uh it's like the big tournament that bumble bear throws on for arcade um like two years ago there was one in portland and we got invited to basically hold the first tournament of killer cream black there. wow and so cool. that that was a lot of fun like so yeah it, it's always been a very um i guess mutual uh relationship as far as like you know we'll be the first ones to promote killer killer queen arcade and like they they do the same for black so mm-hmm. it's That's great, great. In that way yeah, it seems like you guys have a really like synergistic relationship uh, yeah. between y'all, which is really nice to see. Because it's like, because I follow both on on Twitter, you know, and it's like, and I love, and you're just always retweeting each other's shit. It's, really <laughs> nice <to see>. yeah. <laughs> it's like an echo chamber that we have going. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, side note, but I'm really glad to, to, that we're finally talking to y'all uh, for this podcast. Like, our, uh, I feel like we've been, whoever, is it Jackie, I think, that runs the uh, the Instagram? Yeah, yeah, yeah social Jackie's media manager? Great. Yeah, Jackie, uh, we've 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 had long uh, standing <laughs> friendship with the uh, the Killer Queen Black uh, mm-hmm. Instagram account, so it's good to finally have you guys on. No, oh, happy to do it. Thanks for having. Yeah, me. yeah. Um, well, maybe maybe next we could ask a little bit about um, sort of the updates to the game that have come out, and maybe some of the future ones that are planned. We know that there's some talk about a new map coming at some point. Um, maybe we could talk about. You know, maybe how how has that process been with y'all updating the game? We can start there, maybe. Sure. Um, um, there, you know, there there's been different versions of updates. Like like at least the way I look at it, like look at them from a, a development standpoint, it's like there's new features and whatnot. So like early on, it was the eight player stuff, and then mm-hmm. uh, really revamping how you could do friends. Like when we when we released, you couldn't become friends and invite somebody to your party on a different platform. You know, like we didn't have a notion of like, you know, Rocket League calls it a rocket ID or something like that. Right. Ours is like a liquid ID, but like that was a big feature we had to get out right after launch. It was just like we gotta allow make that process easier. And that entailed also doing stuff so you could you know, set your settings to be like anyone that I'm friends with can join my party. Like they, they can just click and see that and like jump right in. So those are like the new features we added. And that was usually pretty early on. uh, That was mostly early on um, after launch. Uh, And then it was platforms, right? Like there's, there's a lot that goes into doing releasing and, you know, checking all the boxes of requirements for things like Xbox. Um, and right. every one of those now going into our latest update, which has um, a new map as well as a new character runner skin, uh, which if you've played the arcade, he 
he's the only one missing from arcade. Uh, so Abs is going to be present in this Very next good. update. Very yeah. good. Uh, Abs, who has his own game now, also, right? Uh, yeah, they changed the name, I think, of it recently. <laughs> yeah. It used to be Abs versus the Blood Queen, but now I yeah. think it's like Zombies, something like that. Um, right, okay, cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we've had that, and it's just we finally got some time to put it in. Um, and we're currently going through uh, the CERT process across all the different uh, you know, we're on like four, I think that need to be go through a cert process. Right. So like if one gets dinged, it's like, we have to kind of like, you know, we have to release them all in sync because if the network code doesn't line up, it'll just crash. That seems like such a nightmare. Just the certification process just on one platform seems like a yeah, nightmare, no. right? Like, <laughs> like what, what is it? What is it like juggling those? Like if you, if you get feedback from one of them, do you then have to like update all the other uh processes on the other platforms or yeah i mean it kind of depends like xbox might ding you and it's somewhat related to like they're recently played which right we have a separate service that kind of runs some of that uh for security reasons um so if that happens it's like all right well we'll just let nintendo keep going but if if they report a failure and it's like, oh, I should check to see how it is. And if it's broken on those, it's like we have to cancel all of them and resubmit. So right. yeah. it, it, it can be a process. And like, you know, it's it's like instead of a submarine with two people turning their key, it's like we need five people to turn their key at the same <laughs> oh, yeah. time. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's 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 not a and, and I mean, you know, it, it's just heartbreaking every time like a failure happens. And it's like, ah, oh, because Got to go right. through everything just to resubmit it across all these platforms. But, you know, it's, yeah, it's Stadia, Luna, Xbox, and Switch now. So, right. so we, we're currently going through the submission process, but as soon as all those pass, we'll be releasing out the new patch as soon as we can. So. Yeah, very excited to play that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, abs. Uh, the dance for abs is great. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> yeah, please don't spoil. <laughs> well, uh, but, I, I'm a little curious just following up on on kind of like free DLC. I mean, you guys have like very much supported this game over time. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, I, I, I feel like a lot of times free DLC to developers can feel a little bit like like it, it, like you're kind of like stuck in it. Right. Sometimes like if you like make mm-hmm. some promises at the beginning and you're like, we're going to do this stuff as free DLC. You know, then it's like if sales slow or something that can like become kind of problematic, you know, it's like, oh, well, now we're kind of stuck, like not making money off of this DLC like we could be to get new revenue to keep paying the fucking bills. And and I'm sure like not all of this is in your purview, but it's like, what what what's the decision like that? Like, is that something that's made early on to be like, we're going to be supporting this game? And, and And maybe it's like, you know, stuff like Luna or Game Pass, you know, getting kind of like cash injection, like helps with some of that and the ability. It, to yeah, that. I mean. It, it helps working with like those companies and getting that. Um, we, we explored uh, like cosmetics and like season mm-hmm. pass type things. Um, it just kind of, we didn't think about it up front was the problem. Right. So yeah. it started, it started to just, you know, when we kind of scoped it out and I mean, I'm terrible at estimating any sort of work when it comes to my job. Uh, but it was, it, it was a big chunk of work. And so like, we just kind of had to make the decision that we couldn't go that route, you know, mm-hmm. like, unfortunately wish we had like thought about it up front, but <laughs> sure. yeah, you know, it just, it, it, you know, it became when we really started to look at both the work involved in making them, how we figure out who has what, how we do all the charging behind it. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it becomes a uh, a little bit dicier when it's like you're taking money from people in game versus like all they did they bought it through this other person and we let them play the game now um you know right. it's, it it's, it gets a little like hairier there and and cross platform stuff um you know if you're if you have it on multiple consoles like ideally you'd be able to have those skins across all of them right Right, and you'd be playing on the same account, and so like it just really started to spiral. Yeah. So, on like an alternate timeline, we could have got Killer Queen Black with emotes that would feature like the floss or Carlton. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> yeah, where's my battle pass, man? Yeah. I need yeah. yeah. bucks. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll be in the news too. Like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Alfonso yeah. Davis. Say. Ariana Grande skin and uh-huh. Killer Queen Black. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's just something that's always been interesting to me is like kind of that decision, you know, because as a consumer, like as a gamer, I love it. You know, it's like, it makes it really easy for me to recommend this game to other people. You know, I mean, I feel like, I feel like that's been like, I think that's like the the biggest way that I'm able to recommend this game to people is just like the barrier to entry is so low. You know, it's like whether it's being able to just kind of pick up and play and figure out what you're doing early on, or, you know, like it's an indie game and you're always going to have people to play with, you know, be it, you know, because mm-hmm. it's cross platform or because you have like it populated with bots that then get replaced by people, which is a, really great idea by the way i don't oh, know yeah, of any other game play. that i don't know of any other game that does that and it just makes everything so seamless so props to that um but you know all this stuff and then uh, down to the free dlc it's like like i as a consumer i love that right and so it's always just kind of like interesting to me like where those decisions get made in the process on like you know how how much do we want to like support the scene that we've already like built from a very beginning point versus like you know, just like the ec- economics of it is I'm not yeah. like a money guy. So that stuff always like, makes my <laughs> head spin, you know, so I'm just interested to hear people's takes on it. Yeah. And I think certain things, you know, like even when we pursued or looked into doing like outfits or stuff you could tack onto them, uh, like we wouldn't ever cut out like like maps and new characters would have always been there and available for everyone. It was more right. of just. You know, there's a running joke in Killer Queen arcade community about hats. Like that's essentially what they want is little hats they can put on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, God damn it, Val! If you ruined this for everybody, <laughs> that's what our code name was for it. Um, and it would have been things like that. And like, I really wish we had thought about it up front, and we just mm-hmm. didn't. Sure. You know, live and you learn. No complaints over here. <laughs> <laughs> we have been talking for a little while, so maybe we can all kind of wrap this up with some final questions uh, if there's anything we missed one thing i want to make sure to ask about and adam you may not be the right person because you know this might be somebody at bumble bear but maybe you can speak to this a little bit uh and i also need to play zombies because that might be the answer right um but i would love to know uh, a little bit about the lore of this world yeah um, lore baby let's go <laughs> um you know we we just sort of jump into these matches with the queen and these uh insect-like creatures and you know and the backgrounds see, right yeah, with all the see, temples and shit we see the backgrounds yeah. and there's the cityscape that looks like it's been overrun by hives can you is there any uh insight you can share uh, with, about I mean, the, the universe <laughs> <laughs> the most lore i can think of is i don't know i was just on a whim someone asked about the snail in discord and i named our snail winston nice. and said it and said it was a different snail than the one in our head um and that kind of stuck but uh right. that's that's really, I mean, the like our map creator, uh, Blake Reynolds, uh, he would come up with a lot of lore behind some of the maps. Um, but yeah, and, and especially as far as arcade, that's it's definitely out of my wheelhouse to speak to. Um, right. But Winston, that one was me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. I just want to know what the great fucking Bumble Bear War of 2000 XX or whatever yeah. it is that, that started this whole thing off. Because there's definitely it's a world that is decaying, right? That this thing takes place yeah. in. I find that to be fascinating. But also, there's the like when y'all introduced Killer Queen Black, you had the incredible animation before the gameplay trailer. Um, that mm. also showed off some of the lore and like uh, like the weapons and the characters and the fighting and stuff. So um, waiting for the Netflix adaptation. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, we'll just, I'll get on it. Wait, if we if we if they if somehow an anime ended up out of this, I'd be very happy. <laughs> I, I can I can talk to some people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Is Take there that d- Castlevania? We'll just ride <laughs> yeah. the tales there. You got it. Is there any um, any other questions or, or Adams? Is there anything that we didn't ask that that maybe we should have? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, nothing from my side. But if you guys have yeah. any other questions, just let me know. No, I mean that that basically hit a lot a lot of the stuff that I was interested in talking about, and it's I don't know. I, again, it's just like I think that this was. I think it's. I'm glad that you guys launched on on Switch first, to be honest. And I think like I think it it, it was also kind of a clutch game just 
for the eShop in general when it did come out, you know, because it was like, you know, the Switch has always been this platform of, you know, obviously people really, I feel like people buy a Switch for the Nintendo first party games, right? But then it's like, yeah, yeah. now that there are like so many out there and and the eShop has proven to be such a boon for a lot of developers. And I think a lot of people are like really reaping the benefits of having their, their stuff on there. And y'all's game was like a game that early on, uh, you know, or at least in that kind of first you know quarter, I guess, of the switch being out was like a really great, like online multiplayer game to play with friends. Right. And it was like, and I think that's why it really took off in our, in our discord community for this podcast and stuff was like, you know, like it just had a low barrier to entry. It was easy to pick up and play. You know, it was great during the pandemic, you know, just mm-hmm. like playing with a lot of friends, like over long distances. And and because it's that single screen experience, it really kind of like makes you feel like you're on the couch while not yeah. being able to be next to each other. So, yeah, I think it was just it seemed like the right place at the right time for that. Um, and um, yeah, and that was, was uh, again, back to like why, like, you know, was kind of always our first choice on console we wanted to go to is hitting that window before it oversaturates totally, you know, in the eShop. Yeah. And, and I do feel like, um, you know, uh, and happy we were able to do that is didn't feel like there was a ton of multiplayer games, you know, right. mm-hmm. available out on switch. I mean, Mario party just got multiplayer, right. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. so like like, two years later or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was nice to like, be able to like, I guess, bring that aspect of gaming, you know, it would be one contribution to that on switch. So, yeah. And I think you should rest, you should rest easy knowing that you have better net code than super smash brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Your words, not mine. I don't want to get in trouble. No, I'll shout that from a fucking rooftop, man. I don't care. I've been, I've been saying that since day one. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Adam, thank you so much for talking to us about the game. Um, you're actually going to stick around with us for just a little bit longer to talk about the games we've all been playing recently. So we're glad to have you comment on the games we're playing and hear about what you're playing. Uh, but we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk all about those games we've been playing. I've actually been playing a lot of games recently, so but I'm going to try to be brief and just hit the high notes here. Um, Go long, Patrick. Go long. <laughs> um Playing a lot of Pikmin 3 with my son. Um, we have been just focused on getting every platinum badge in the mission mode. And we are like, we got all but like four right now on the co-op. So that's been actually a lot of fun. Me yelling at him at my six-year-old, you know, not throw the Pikmin. Um, <laughs> it's intense. Um, and what else? I I uh, I want to say this. I, I, I actually completed, because I keep track of this, six games in July. Um, Ooh. Like, and that sounds like a lot and it is, but a lot of them are games that I went back to that I was near the end and actually finished. Um, so July was a big month for me beating games and Patrick's year off work. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Patrick. So uh, it was one of those uh, Xenoblade Chronicles too. No, but I started <laughs> playing it again <laughs> yeah. this, this past week. Um, but then I did want to talk about, the game I talked about last week, which is Ginny LeClue Detective Vu, which mm-hmm. is a, a indie game that I raved about last time and I still really like it, but I beat it and I was a little bit or a lot disappointed in the ending. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just goes to show how important endings are. And this is, I don't think this is a spoiler, but I think this is a, maybe a fair warning to anybody that plays this game. It ends with a to be continued. Gotcha. Um, and I think I did not know that <laughs> going into it. And I did not know that when I was loving it. And so that might, but I kind of, I'm sharing that now. Um, I still recommend playing it. It's got a great uh, art style. The voice acting is wonderful. It's fun, a uh, mystery, but you don't really get to solve it. Yeah, And that's kind of a bummer um, when I hit that. And I could not find any information on the internet about a sequel being currently in development either. So I was a little bit, bummed to see that but so i'm going to temper my recommendation of that game a little bit that's a fair that's a fair assessment if you're looking for a complete story sure yeah because it's very story centric and when you don't you know and i was in it super well paced game but then you get to the end and the pacing gets a little bit hectic and then it it, and then it drops a very sudden to be continued on you and i was like instantly googling you know is there where's the sequel you know (laughs) what i mean like and then there's no news and you're a little bit like okay that 
<laughs> maybe soured me on this experience a little sure. bit. Sure. What, are okay. you going to hit us with that list of the games that you completed? Oh, y'all want to hear all of them? Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Let's hear them, dude. It's a fucking right. video game podcast, man. Let's hear it. <laughs> yeah, hey, let me pull it up. I apologize, but it shouldn't take me very long. Um, um, yeah, so here, let me pull up my gaming spreadsheet. There um, we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but by the way, if, uh, if, if you're listening to this and you're interested in that, we have a whole episode about uh gaming spreadsheets <laughs> that's <laughs> true De- we do de- defeating your backlog yeah yeah all right so uh i beat undertale the other day Why? um the f- i played it through once right like yeah. you know um the, yeah, i'm so going back undertale. in time i'm going backwards in time then jenny leclue detective vu um which i talked about with y'all and then it's um the gardens between another indie game very good um and then i've got Super Mario 3D World, which again I was kind of near the end, but rolled credits on this month, and then Shovel Knight. Count it, Shovel Knight, the Shovel of Hope at least uh, was that one, and then at the very beginning of the month I beat Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh, there we oh, go. Nice. Very, very proud of you, Patrick. That's a really <laughs> kind of game. Those are all good games. Yeah, yeah they are actually. Uh, Ori, Ori, I played that one. I yeah, I, yeah. Like that one. <laughs> I, 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 and on my short list is. Uh, uh, Wind of the Wisp. The, what's the yeah. Will of the Will Wisp? Of the wisp. Yeah, Will of the yeah. Wisp. Yeah. 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 That's a great one as well. Um, Matt, what about you? What have you been playing this uh, this past week? This past week, I played nothing but Halo Infinite uh, technical preview. Um, right. So I got, got lucky enough um, to be inside of that. Myself, I play with a crew every Thursday, and I was the only one uh, out of the three of us who got in. Um, yeah. Uh, and so was it mostly bots or were you also playing people? Yeah, it was, it was bots Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then they allowed PVP multiplayer on Sunday yesterday. Okay. Um, and man, it's great. It's, it's exactly the type of change you want to see. It's a little bit of halo three and a little bit of halo five for mobility, but it scratches that nostalgic itch, um, and different enough to, appeal to new gamers um cool. it's it's quite the feat it is complete region reimaginings um the the biggest part about halo 5 was the maps there's not a really memorable maps to maps uh there's like maybe two or three right but the the three they preview three maps which is unbelievable that they previewed so much of multiplayer in a technical preview on the first weekend and we saw three maps and they're all really good well balanced well paced maps um, and I would, I'm, I'm just really impressed. Yeah. That thing's going to blow up too. Cause that's, that's going to be free to play, right? Yeah. Um, multiplayer yeah. will be free to play. I think so that's, I'm, I'm looking forward to that for sure. It is Microsoft's, uh, game to lose. Um, if they don't like really release it and have a strong presence because like this weekend, I don't know if y'all were on Twitter, but it felt like Halo infinite was like all ever anyone was talking about there like, might be a little bit of your algorithm but i did totally. see some of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i mean like spawn wave put out a whole video of like him talking about halo infinite for like yeah i saw a lot of 20, people streaming it 28 yeah. whole minutes um but also my algorithms is the most important one it's my <laughs> algorithm <laughs> i've just uh I can't tell you how good that game is. And it feels so good after spending so much time in Halo 5 to play a new Halo after six years. Um, well, they really gotten... want to boost that player base. They just got mm-hmm. put on the Switch. That's all. <laughs> yeah. And did they bring back like one of the original designers of yeah. Halo uh-huh. to help yeah. with it? Or I forget what his name is. They brought him back, I think, late 2020. To help with some of the direction, yeah, I don't yeah, remember because they had that big blog post after they it got that tepid reaction or whatever, and it was like the <laughs> ex-Bungie dev, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, the multiplayer direction feels good. If I would only offer any criticism, that'd be UI. Uh, UI still needs a little bit of work. It's not that great, uh, <laughs> but the gameplay, I can I can look past that one. Smooth awesome. mechanics, David. What you uh, got? Oh, yeah, I'll go next. Uh, I've been playing kind of a a number of different games on a number of different platforms uh, this week. Uh, I'll start off just by saying uh, on the Switch front, uh, played a bit of the uh, Picross uh, Sega Genesis demo. Very excited for that game to come out on my fucking birthday on the (laughs) 5th. Uh, so that's going to be a nice birthday present that I buy for myself. I'm a big Picross fan. Anybody who listens to the show knows that. Uh, and then also on switch, uh, just today, 
Finally, I got somebody to play Panel de Pawn with me on the Nintendo Switch Online uh, service, uh, the, the Super Nintendo game. I've been trying to get people to play Panel uh, de Pawn with me for like two years, like basically since this podcast yeah. like started. Uh, and somebody finally, uh, Jay, I played some with him today. And all he, he was like, oh, this is just Pokemon Puzzle League. I didn't realize it was Pokemon Puzzle League. I was like, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's been Pokemon Puzzle League the whole time. So anyway, we had some great games today. It was super fun to play. And uh, if anybody wants to play with me, I'll be down at any point. It's just so much fun to play those uh, Super Nintendo games online through the Switch. It just works seamlessly. It's awesome. Uh, and then uh, as far as other platforms are concerned, I did download the 110 gigabyte uh, flight simulator uh, game off of Game Pass for my Xbox Series S. Uh, uh, happy to report that that is a fantastic port. Uh, and it, you know, I didn't play it on PC, but I imagine... <laughs> it's not too far off from what we got on, on console. Um, you know, it plays really great. Um, I was able to download a bunch of airports and shit. Like they had a, a bunch of free packs as well that I've downloaded since then. And um, yeah, just super fun to fly around and, you know, do different missions or, or just takeoffs and landings and shit like that. So I've been having you, a lot of fun with that. Do you have a HOTUS like, style no un unfortunately i do somewhere at my dad's house but i'm not like <laughs> quite ready to plug that into my series s uh but uh you know it, it actually you know works really well on a controller and you know like one of my favorite games of all time is pilot wings on the super nintendo so i'm like used to controller controls for for this and it's like and there's like varying degrees of of uh of kind of uh, customization of how intense you want the controls and the simulation to actually be. So there's like a big spectrum and it actually works a lot better on controller than I expected. But that if I really start putting a lot of time into this, then yes, I will be getting a, a joystick. Maybe I'll I mean, I, I, I bought a HOTUS just because I got, when I got a new computer, I got uh, the Oculus like two. Right. And I got squadrons. I was like, nah, right. I can't, I yeah. can't play this with an Xbox controller. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. I know a lot of, a lot of them. I never saw, I never out. saw Wedge using an Xbox controller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, fucking, if they can use Xbox controllers to, for military drones in the Middle East, <laughs> yeah. we should be able to for our video games. But anyway, uh, that's got a little dark for no yeah, reason. That, but, uh, <laughs> uh, David, but, what were, uh, what were the six cities you visited in, uh, Flight Simulator? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I've even done six, but I, you know, I did, you know, I did New Would York. And I yeah. did, you know, I did Giza and uh, and all that kind of stuff. You know, obviously did Austin and my hometown. And then, uh, you know, just some cross-country shit. Like, I, I, I knew I'd be, like, putting a little bit of time into it. I did not expect to be like, oh shit, I've got, I, I've got to go do my show like at fallout. And it's, I've been playing this game for three hours and my time totally got away from me. It just kind of like sucked me into it. So I've been really enjoying that. And then, uh, lastly, I'll say, uh, uh, I have started and I'm now fully invested in persona five on PlayStation four. Uh, I am now like what five or six hours into the game, which I know is still very early and like a, what's supposed to be like 120 hour fucking runtime for this <laughs> RPG. Uh, but man, uh, just what a stylish and awesome game that is. Um, I am notorious for starting RPGs and never finishing them. Uh, so I just avoid them a lot nowadays because I know this about me. But like, if I'm going to play through one uh, that I've been putting off for years, it's Persona 5. Uh, and so now I've, I've, and I'm playing Royal as well. So it's got all the kind of the quality of life improvements um, that I've been hearing uh, made the game a lot better. So I'm really enjoying it. Um, and man, I, this would be such a perfect game for Switch. I hope that they get their head out of their butt and release this on multi-platform <laughs> sometime soon. Uh, release the actual Persona Five, not like the uh, yeah, battle, not but... not Strikers, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because the problem is like Strikers is out on Switch, but it like apparently I, you know, I haven't played it because I wanted to play through this first. But it's like apparently it's like you need to have played Persona Five to understand at all what's going on in that game. No, it's and so it's like, you know, come on, he's in Smash, man. Like, just put the game <laughs> on the Switch. But anyway, so that's that's what I've been playing this week. So I went a little long. Um, but what about you, man? What have you been playing this week, Adam? Uh, this week, so um, I started Hades recently. Oh, finally, nice. very good. Um, which uh, I was a huge Dead Cells fan. Um, like that was kind of like the first roguelike I really got into. I made the mistake of trying to play uh, I, uh, Binding of Isaac right after Dead Cells, and it just 
didn't gel with me. So as a like, huge Binding of Isaac fan, I completely understand that. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it was just like I don't know why I thought uh, slamming two roguelikes <laughs> on top of each other would be good, yeah, yeah. and especially the later one just being a little bit grittier and just kind of. There's a lot of poo and pee and blood. A lot of gross. There's <laughs> yeah. like a little more gross than what I was. So it like maybe I'll go back and play it because it does. I've read great things. I know it's a good game. Um, but Hades is incredible. So I've been playing that. I still play some uh, Mario Golf. Uh, oh, yeah. When I'm watching the Olympics, like, <laughs> yeah. I'll just it's like, uh, yeah, whatever. I, I like golf games. I'll just chip away at those. Um but otherwise, like I just moved to Portland and my best friend uh, from college lives here. So we've been playing Towerfall. Like now we can play like lo- yeah. local multiplayer. And yeah. I Celeste was has is one of my top games ever. Um, oh, yeah. And I always love Towerfall. Like the way they they can uh, Matt makes games or I can't remember what they're called now. Um, yeah. 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 I forget. They, they rebranded the name. But uh, right. Their control, like their game feel is just to me, like almost unparalleled in yeah. games I've played in, in the last years. Just feels great. Tower so anyways, like incredible. playing Towerfall is just like phenomenal again. And to be able to like play it, you know, post vaccines and whatnot, like, yeah. you know, with a friend I haven't seen in years that often. Um, and then on Switch, I mean, uh, Windjammers. We've been playing oh, that nice. too against let's each go, other. Let's go. Let's go. Windjammers is a great game. Because <laughs> yeah. I also, I found that one at Logan Arcade. We'd play on like, you know, those SNK arcade machines that had like 15 games on it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Windjammers was one of my favorite ones to do there. Um, Love other than that, uh, so much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was going to say, uh, Matt Makes Games, their new name is Extremely OK Games. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, E-O-G. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. E-X-O-X. E-O-K-G. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you were playing. You have to ask s- them for the right pronunciation, or pronunciation <laughs> yeah. on it. Um, you said session? You've been playing uh, session? session. I picked up session the other week because uh, I was always, I always had an interest in skateboarding. I tried to skate. First time I went out, I compound fractured my ankle. So I don't oh, no. actually <laughs> skate anymore. That was in high school. Uh-huh. Yeah. But uh, my buddy was a big skater. And so we just wanted a game. We could just hang out and like each try to do runs. And it's it's early access. It's still rough around the edges. But mm-hmm. I see potential there. Um, it, it, it's been fun to play. So. Uh, quick question for you, Adam. Uh, you're a big fan of Towerfall. Have you played Samurai Gun? No, I know of it, but I haven't played it. Definitely, if you if you're if you're enjoying that, and you've got like friends around, and you can play some, and you're all vaxxed, and you want to play some local <laughs> multiplayer, I think Samurai Gun Two, the beta or the early access just dropped on Steam. Uh, that's that's one definitely to check out if you're a Towerfall fan. That's like uh, I'll check that out. Uh, the other I want to get him to try is uh, another game that I just I wish there was a multiplayer presence is uh, IDARB. Um, I don't know if you guys ever played that. Uh, Oh, it's like a, I I know I got it on Xbox. It's a, it, I darb stands for, I drew a red box. And it's like a guy like, (laughs) was like, I'm going to make a new game. The first thing he did was draw a red box. Right. And then it turned into like, like kind of a tower fall sports game. Okay. Like it Uh feels like uh, sold, but it, 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 it was always fun. Um, uh, so I want to get him to try that too. So I feel like I'm going to be playing a lot of local multiplayer games and Hades till I beat it. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Uh, well then that does it for this episode. Thank you so much, Adam, for coming on and joining us and talking about killer queen. Everybody go check out killer queen black. Um, Thanks to MilkyWay.co, who does our website. Thanks to Corduroy, who does our music. If you're looking for me, Patrick, online, I am PDYX. Hey, I'm on Twitter, Matthew, M-A-T-H-Y-O-U. I'm pretty much everywhere on the internet, at Monolith Fiji. And uh, what about you, Adam? Where can people find you online? Uh, AJ Walters is my Twitter handle. It's usually what I go with, so. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, like Patrick said, make sure you go check out Killer Queen Black. If you haven't played it already, we hope you're fired up after listening to this interview. Yeah. God damn it. Now it's ready to, you, you know how the sausage is made. Go out there and, and, and taste the sausage. Uh, if you'd like to find our show on social media, we are at Super Switchheads on uh, Instagram and Facebook. We are at Switchheads on Twitter. And then, of course, uh, always, uh, we got to give a plug to our Discord and Facebook communities. Uh, we'll have links to both of those in the description of the show. Man, our Discord is just popping off these days. Uh, you know, and we just figured out a bunch of issues with our bot. So uh, we're, we're good to go on that front. <laughs> so join our Discord right now. It's looking good. Uh, other than that, folks, thank you so much for listening to this uh, developer interview for Killer Queen Black. Uh, this is, like we said earlier, this is a long time in the making. I'm glad we finally were able to talk to, to somebody from Liquid Bit. Such big fans over here at Super Switch Heads. Uh, so thank you once again. Uh, we're going to be back next week, folks. we got a great episode for you next week. What's it about? Oh, you're going to have to wait and find out. <laughs> uh, so tune in and uh, and listen to that one. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel as always. And, you know, God damn it, there's a Delta variant out there. So if you're not vaccinated, what the hell are you doing? Get the shot, man. It takes two seconds. <laughs> and then you can play great local co-op or local multiplayer games like Towerfall or Samurai Gun or even Killer Queen Black with your friends <laughs> in the comfort of your own home. We love you guys very much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>